In the last video, I show you the mind-blowing note-taking technique called Zettelkasten. If you haven't watched that video, please go watch it before you come back to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you the workflow of how you can develop your own Zettelkasten, how you can set it up from scratch, step by step, and also some examples of how you can utilize this system for your own daily routine. So let's go. Alright, so let's start with the overview of the Zettelkasten development. So there are four steps in the process. First is to capture and then connect, crystallize and create. So the first step is to capture. And what you're going to capture are the things that you consume or the things that come to your mind during the day. So the things that you consume, you're going to capture them on literature notes and the things that come to your mind, you're going to capture them on fleeting notes. The second step is to connect and you will connect the things that you capture to the existing knowledge or the things that could be useful in the future. So you connect backwards and you connect forward. Or you can even connect upward to the area or the topic that are interesting to you. And those would be recorded in hub notes. So hub notes are like the entry points of your knowledge management system. So it would be the list of the things that are interesting to you, the topics that you would like to research. So now you capture a lot of things and you connect, you have insights and crystallize is the process of distilling the idea and putting it down on the paper. So you're going to put it down on permanent notes. And last but not least is to create. So as you can see, it's going to come in full circle because you consume external information. And now once uh, the information goes through your factory, you're going to output that information into the world. So that's pretty much the workflow of how you can develop your own Zettelkasten. Now that you understand the overview, next we're going to set up your own first digital Zettelkasten. And in this video, I'm going to use Obsidian as the app to demonstrate the process. But actually, you can use any apps really. If you want to use other apps, please feel free to skip the next section. But if you want to use Obsidian, you can follow along with me. Before we jump right into setting up Obsidian, I would like to explain a little bit briefly why I choose Obsidian as the app of choice for today. Actually, I would like to let you know that there are many, many apps that you can use for setting up your own Zettelkasten and you can feel free to do some research. But I choose Obsidian because it's very powerful and also it's free. Everything I'm going to show you in this video can be applied to any app. I'm just choosing Obsidian as a starting point. Of course, first thing first, you have to download Obsidian to your computer and it's available on every platform, even iPhone, iPad, and Android. So you can download it everywhere. So once you have Obsidian, you have to, of course, open it up. Okay, so this is the first user interface that you're going to see. It's going to tell you to either open or create a new vault. And a vault is basically a folder on your computer. So let me demonstrate what I mean. So if I hit create, Okay, and then I pick location. What's going to happen is that it's going to create a new folder or a new vault on my computer. And if I hit new note, note, what you see is that the new note is just a file on my computer. So that's how Obsidian works is that it's a local file management system. So it doesn't store information on the cloud. But in this case, I sync my files to iCloud so I can sync them to iPhone and iPad. And that's convenient that way. Next, we're going to tweak some settings. We're going to do two things. We're going to set up a daily note and also we're going to customize the look and feel of Obsidian. First, we're going to enable daily note function. So you go to settings and you go to core plugins and turn on daily notes. Next, you go to daily notes section and toggle on open daily notes on startup. What that's going to do is that next time that you open Obsidian, it's going to open a new file called daily note. And that's where we're going to record all the fleeting notes so that we have all the randoms and all the thoughts recorded in Obsidian every day. Next, we're going to customize the look and feel of Obsidian so that it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. The problem with Obsidian today is that if you are in the editing mode, you have to put symbols in order to format your text. And these symbols will not go away. 
The only way that you can make it go away as of today, December 19, 2021, is that you have to upgrade to the Catalyst version, which costs $25 one-time payment, which is not too bad. And what you're going to get is a new feature called Live Preview. And once you hit Live Preview, it's going to get rid of all the symbols and you can edit in a really pretty way. But if you don't want to pay, there are two options. You can wait until this feature comes out to the public version and you're going to get it for free. Or you can choose different themes. So the theme I really like is called Red Graphite. So you can go to themes and then choose Red Graphite. It's going to make those symbols look a little smaller and look um, generally a little bit prettier. However, it's not going to look as pretty as the live preview mode. In this case, I'm going to switch it to live preview for now. Now we are ready to set up our own shadow casting in Obsidian. So we're going to create different folders to store different kinds of notes that we covered before. So let's get started. Now that we have all the folders to store our notes, the last step, which is optional, but I would highly recommend is to create hub notes. And basically hub notes are the notes that contains the topics or areas of interest. You don't have to have hub notes at the start, but it will be helpful to have some topics for your research. For example, for me, I start off with leadership and psychology, and then I add more topics as the time goes on. In the main top note, I will divide the topics into three sections. Compass, which is the guiding principle of how I want to lead my life and about who I am. Second is pillars, which are the areas that are important to my life. And last but not least is growth, which is the areas of interest. Now we are ready to rock. But our set of casting is empty and lonely. So it doesn't have anything right now besides the hub notes. So we have to fill in with something. There are two ways that you can get started with your set of casting journey. So first is that you can import all the notes from other applications that you have in the past. So for me, I had my notes in the application called Bear, which is a really pretty application and I love Bear so much. However, Bear is not a knowledge management system. It doesn't have um, bi-directional linking and it's not really good for building your knowledge. It's more of a writing app. So what I do is I um, import all my wisdom and reflections and everything, the journals, into Obsidian. And that's the starting point for me. Second way that you can get started is to summarize everything you have read or have consumed in the past that are interesting to you. Like this is one of the books that I really love. It's written by Stanford professor so as you can see, I have all these pretty cover and also highlights from Kindles. And I didn't do this by myself. I used the app called Readwise to do that for me. So it automatically import everything from Kindle to Obsidian. However, it's pretty pricey. I already stopped using it. I just use it one time and then I do it manually after that. But you don't have to use Readwise. You can just simply summarize everything you have learned in the past. And then once you have summarized so many books, you can try to relate the book to other books or other things that you have collected in your casting. For example, Connect is a book about relationship. I said that relationship has trade-offs. Good relationship needs to be win-win. So I related this to the win-win concept in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So that's the way that you can connect two notes together and form a stronger connection of knowledge that way. So the last thing in this video is that I'm going to show you exactly how you can incorporate set casting system into your own daily routine. So every day I would have my daily note ready to go on my Mac. And every time that there is something that comes to my mind, I would write it down. For example, I might do some light journal, like I felt pretty good this morning. I would put down what's on my mind. Then whenever I consume something, for example, yesterday I watched this video from Warren Buffett that talks about um, the business lady that sold the business to him. And it's pretty interesting. So every time I watch something, I would write down a note. So I would start off with the title of the YouTube. So I would do bracket bracket and then paste the name of the YouTube. And what that's going to do is 
is going to create a new link. But right now, it's just a link uh, that's empty and it doesn't have a file. But once you hit Command or, sh or Control and then hit, it's going to create a new file. Then the first thing you want to do is to put down reference information. In this case, I put the hub note of how to build a great company, the tag of YouTube, the source link, and other is of course Warren Buffett. Then I would put down the notes from the video. Now that I have captured the things I consume, the next step is to connect. So Warren Buffett was talking about the key to business success, which is to delight customers. And I thought of two videos that talked about a very similar concept. One is one of the influencer in Thailand called Pimri Pai. So she's a very popular influ influencer in Thailand. And also there's another video about 10x CEO that talks about very um, similar concept as well. So what I would do is I would do bracket bracket and then I would search for the name of the literature notes like Pimri Pai X Woody. So that's that's the name of the video that I'm looking for. But I don't want to refer to the whole thing. I remember that there's a section that she talks about delighting customer specifically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift and six. And that's going to refer to a section within the note. Refer to the section that talks specifically about delighting customers. Then I'm going to do a very similar thing to another video called 10x CEO. So I'm going to do bracket bracket 10x to search for the name of the video. Then instead of hitting enter, I'm going to do shift 6 again so that it would allow me to link to certain parts of the note. So he talks about good business model needs to being able to predictably delight customers. So I will link to that as well. Now that we have captured what we consume, we have connected everything together. Next is to crystallize new insights and idea. And because so many videos talks about delighting customers, I would like to make a new permanent note about this. So I would do bracket bracket and then, and then name the new permanent note like that. As you see before, just creating a link wouldn't create a new page. What you have to do is hit command and then click. It will create a new page. Once I have a new note, I normally relate it to a hub note at the very least so that you can find it later on in the process. However, you can write down more information if you want. What's cool about this is that you can also see where it's linked from. Like for example, in this case, you will see that Warren Buffett um, YouTube video is the one that really lead to this permanent note. At the end of each day, I would normally look through these notes that are hanging around at the top level and try to add more information or connect more to other notes or hub notes. But if I'm done with everything, the last thing I would do during the day, I would put it in the right folder. For example, the daily note I would put in the fleeting um, and delighting customer. Um, this one would be the permanent note, so I will put it in the permanent note. And this one is a literature note, so I'll put it in literature. So that's pretty much the whole process. As time goes on, if you keep doing this every single day, your knowledge will turn into this sort of like giant graph of knowledge that you can interact with. And that's one of the cool things about Obsidian is that not only you can view the notes with the list, but you can also see the graphs and see connection. You can filter for certain keywords and I would really encourage you to play around with this view is really cool. The most important thing about Zettercasting is that it's never ending learning process. It's a lifelong learning process. So you can keep building the graph and building your own knowledge and iterate it over time. So in the end, you will have your own personal knowledge management system that you can rely on and also can produce new insights, new information based on this system. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you like what you learned today. And also above all, I hope Hope you apply this uh, technique to your own learning. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And if you find this video useful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you in the next one.